What's going on there? Oh, you boy. So, welcome back to this week's training vlog. Don't think we had a training vlog from me last week, but welcome back. Uh, today is Easter Monday. So myself and Owen both failed to realize that today was a bank holiday. So we had to go into the office very early um, to get the new show sorted. And now we're training. So I'm here with Murple Derples and my missus is training as well. Today's thing is some triples on the squats. You'll get to see that. And then a 10K later tonight. Probably won't be much footage of that. Uh, so good weekend. Around eight hours of driving yesterday. So my hip flexors are incredibly tight. Um, so we'll have to do some extra work on those if that causes an issue in the warm-up if not I'm just gonna have to do the extra work afterwards in the cool down to make sure they're okay for for the running later tonight To be honest the hip flexors don't affect my squat much at all, but they do affect the running quite a lot uh, That foot not coming back behind kind of tightens up my back an awful lot shortens my stride so I need to make sure we're in a good position and ready to go. So this is 15 grams of creatine and a small bit of electrolytes. I'm gonna leave off the carbs. Don't think I'll need them for the, the squat session. Save them for the running later tonight. Yeah. No, no, like upright like this. So everything as we're warming up now feels pretty good. Hip flexors don't feel too short or too tight. So it's all grand. Uh, we've talked about this before, but putting on knee sleeves at the start of the warm-up isn't ideal, but just has to be done. So we'll build up now for those sets of three. All good so far, nice and easy, 160 next. Hey, 
Good boy. That's the triple done. I should be doing two more sets of three, but I'm not going to. My adductors are cramping up. So the next piece now is that mobility work I was talking about. So hip flexors, and we'll do a bit of adductors as well. Squats themselves feel grand. I just don't want to tear my groin off. So as part of the mobility work, obviously, as we said earlier, hip flexors, adductors. I'm gonna be doing some muscle work or some physical work on my biceps and shoulders as well. So big problem I have anytime I start training again. It's a bit of a weird one. So I wake up in the middle of the night and my arms go dead. So it's some nerve impingement coming from my biceps and shoulders being too tight. Now, this is definitely spurred on by a mixture of jujitsu and then being in a large calorie deficit so my upper body still getting quite a bit of fatigue quite a bit of muscular tension and soreness but not necessarily recovering too well so anytime my kind of arms go up above my head when i'm sleeping my two hands go dead wakes me up so small bit of physical work on the biceps hopefully will help with that So the strange thing here is usually most of that muscular tension is held down, lower down on the bicep, down where the, that tendon is attaching on. It's usually where if I get bicep fatigue from sparring or anything like that, or if I'm doing something in the gym where I have a lot of chin ups or something in there, that's where it will get sore. For this, it all tends to be up on that kind of proximal end. So just rolling that out two minute timer on each side. And as I'm kind of flossing through these, you, and if you're doing it yourself, you'll feel certain areas be very tight, very sore, and you'll actually feel that hard point in the muscle. So all I do is I come up above that, roll down until I'm on the point of that, and I just hold it there, usually around 30 seconds, nice deep breathing and you'll feel that alleviate out. You gotta roll past that then again. For the shoulders then, what I'm really gonna focus on is that anterior face of my, my shoulder. So same job, barbell. I like the barbell to be around 45 degrees, so it's kind of pointing back in here. And I'll just start to my pack and roll out over it. This is always sore, no matter what. No matter if I'm training or not training. So for this adductor stretch, you see going against the wall, you're not looking to have like gymnast level pike or whatever it is, but ideally you want to be getting fairly good mobility in there. If you're in that position and you find even straightening your knees out, like if pushing your knees to straighten out or pointing your toes back up towards you, uh, like dorsiflecting hurts or brings a bit more attention, then it is something you should look at. Like a lot of us, if you're just squatting or deadlifting or even for weightlifting movements, your adductors don't really get taxed all too much. Sometimes your glutes will be weak and your adductors will come in a small bit earlier. Your, your quads will need your adductors to kick in a bit on the way back up from the squat. But most of the time they will be shortened. All I'm gonna start with here is just a band, normal band. 
don't go crazy heavy on it even a red band which is kind of half the thickness of this will work perfectly i'm going to anchor it down low and i'll just start with an isometric hold just holding that position if you find your balance starts getting kind of a bit iffy or you really start leaning into it just do it next to a squat rack or set next to the wall so you can hold on to it but you're really just looking for that inner thigh to be squeezing in and holding that position So I'm starting here with 30 second holds on these. When I'm standing on my right leg and my right leg isn't active, my left leg is pulling in, I tend to be a lot more stable. So there's definitely an imbalance there. I do have a bit of an imbalance anyway that I need to be working on. So these kind of things, keeping an eye on these things, seeing how they're, how they're working out, how they feel from side to side is a great kind of litmus test for how everything is going. Okay, so 90 seconds each side, particularly after a training session when the muscle is warm and ready to go, tends to be pretty good for that band distracted couch stretch. Now, a couple of things on this. A lot of people use band distraction and don't have anywhere near enough band tension and you don't get anything from it. You don't get any of that kind of deviated, deviation of position. You don't get any of that kind of liberation of that hip capsule. So make sure you have enough band tension. A lot of people do it and make it feel like it doesn't really do anything for them. There should be a noticeable difference if you're doing a standard couch stretch and then you bring in some band distraction, there should be a noticeable difference. Second thing then, if you're using a band, you start seeing this kind of ribboning where the band is thinner and thicker as it goes in you probably have too much tension on that band. So when you're looking at a band, it should be the same thickness the whole way through. You'll see some of it on that band here where it's just a bit too much tension. I should be using a heavier one here or for the next round, I'll just double up on these once this hold is done. So we've doubled up band tension now. Another thing to watch out for, make sure you're using bands that are the same amount of wear or ideally the same age. If you're training in the gym, it's a massive stack of bands. Make sure you're not using one really old one and one really new one. The new one will end up having a lot more tension on it. You're not really getting the use of both of them then. So this is the last thing in this session. A bit of auto regulation today. For the kind of bigger hybrid days when you're running and lifting weights, that is important just to keep an eye on it. You also shouldn't be doing it willy-nilly. You should try and stick to it as much as you physically can. And then where deviation is needed, you can alter it. That's why the Seeker Strength Training app is absolutely perfect for that. So in today's session, once I enter in those values into the app, the next sessions are going to be altered and changed and will just give me the best possible progression to make sure I keep pushing as hard as I possibly can, keep getting the best results I can out of it. And as always, make sure you clean the gym. If someone's nice enough to let you leave the, to use the gym out of hours, but even just for your own sake, it's just so good to finish the session off, get everything cleaned away, leave it exactly as it was before. Obviously in my shed, it's a very different ordeal, but in here or anywhere you're training, I think it's, uh, it's a good thing to do. I think it makes for a better, for better athletic development. So it's Monday evening now. It's around half nine, I think. It's 9.47. So I've just had a little nap. Time to do a timed 5K now. The reason for waiting a while before doing it, obviously, is to recover from this morning session. The general rig out for running at night it's one of these harnesses to hold my phone in so i can listen to some music normal very cheap head torch and then i have headphones now the headphones are active noise cancelling headphones but i turn that off so there's like some enhanced hearing stuff that comes along with that so so i don't get knocked down or kidnapped 
if that's possible. But yeah, time to go finish this off and finish this training vlog. So that's another day of training done. It's like 10 to 11 now. So it's 26 minutes for the 5K. It's pretty slow, but everything considered it wasn't too bad. Early session in the morning now. So thanks very much for watching another training vlog. As always, it's great to get your your opinions, your questions, your land based things in the comments. So thanks very much for tuning in. Let me know what you think down below.